you. Thank you. Is there anything that you do in particularly to, uh, to get ready for a gig or any preparation? Relax. Collect force. So uh, we're talking about psychic preparation, not musical. There's nothing that I can do to prepare me for what nobody knows what it's going to be until it happens. So <clears throat> you can do certain melodies, not much to prepare for there. Yeah. But for the most part, no, get the body ready, the mind ready for a certain kind of uh, experience. <laughs> Meditative experience. Yeah. Be open to it. So that when uh, it happens, it's, it's a combination of openness <coughs> and uh, memory and some experience, you know, feeling of uh, let's say, uh, service, uh, service, serving something to the people. So I have to be ready to meet new people. I have to be ready to respond to their questions. And the uh, tremendous demand the musicians are going to put on me to keep up with them. So that's, that's going to be a challenge. So, yeah. In terms of uh, <clears throat> playing in the past and playing, you know, being on the jazz, you know, circuit in New York City, you know, back in the day, um, is there any um, certain advice or things that you would tell musicians backstage who would come up to you or? You know, I know you usually uh, deal with people on a case-by-case -case basis, but are there any, is there any particular things that you would say to uh, musicians? It would depend on the players. Uh, I think when we were behind the, you know, the, the bandstand uh, in the back rooms, just talk about the music, you know, usual frat talk gigs, what was coming up, what happened there, did you hear this, did you hear that? But there was very uh, little opportunity to talk to me directly about what I do and why I do it. But on occasion it came up. Somebody might hear something in the music and say they want to talk to me about that. You know, what's up with that? So we talk about it. We try to talk about it. What happened on the bandstand? It's gone, it's done. So, but we could talk about uh, Maybe uh, what it appears to be about for me, you know, why I play a certain way. Why do I feel comfortable playing a certain way? You know? How is it that I wound up playing as Pharaoh's side man for all those years? You know? Good question. I have no idea. <laughs> Some things just happen, and you just make the most of them. And so in that sense, I was lucky, but I feel that that's where my training was at that point, and I had to learn from that. <laughs> playing with the best cats in the field at the time. It's a good experience. It's all training. Yeah, yeah. Comment? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there was never any conversation about method. Because under the circumstances that we as a group were playing, you either know it or you blow it. <laughs> you're either ready or you're not playing. That's it. There's nothing else to say about that. So there wasn't any, any talk about that, you know. There's never the question, are you ready, you know, in a certain way. You feel comfortable, that never happened. It was just straight ahead, boom, straight wire. Confidence was high. Enthusiasm was high. Getting ready to deal. Play from the right place in, in each of us. So it's an honor to do that these cats. Great experience. Yeah. I would do it again if I had an opportunity. Differently, but I'd do it again. Yeah. Yeah. And then there were a few, you know, particular... Um, and I, I might add, I hardly met any guitar players. Or if they were there, they didn't come up and talk to me. I must not have been a friendly, a friendly type for them. Uh, what about piano players, drummers? Horn players come up, introduce themselves. And, you know, I felt their love. Yeah. 
there were a few uh, guitar players we talked about. Uh, Arthur Rames was one of them that might have. Uh, Arthur Rames, yeah, come yeah, we to. we were together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we played. We played. Uh, he played guitar, piano, and saxophone. Mm -hmm. And he hung out at my place because at that time in his life, he needed guidance, so he gravitated towards me. He knew I was working with Vero, and he was playing with Rashid. I don't know, maybe he was playing with Elvin. I don't know, but certainly Rashid. Yeah, he's a great player, man. He's an inspired player. Uh, sad person. He seemed um, alienated, you know, alone in a certain way, you know. But um, as a seeker, we, we got along very, very well. I, I had answers for him. And, you know, that's what I do. I give people uh, hope in some cases, give them answers, give them conversation. You know, give them some validation in terms of where they're at and what's going on, you know. Uh, I enjoyed playing with them. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, particular advice for a uh, struggling or, or suffering musician in this case? Well, I'd say people? turn to yoga. Mm -hmm. Turn to yoga, and I think that's what... Uh, Arthur did. Mm. He, he was a bhakti yogi. And so uh, whatever the yoga is that you have to turn to, do it. That helps you feel more heart complete, more in devotion to a higher reality. That seems to be very important for people at a certain stage in their progression. Uh, uh, and so uh, he, you know, he was happy with his practice but not happy with his plays, particularly in the world, but he loved playing. Mm -hmm. Whatever he could play, he loved playing. Yeah. And he had all his heart in it. Yeah. We enjoyed playing together. 